What's 1% of a billion? $10 million, which is our eight figures. Out of nowhere, literally dropped in my lap in two weeks. I had no connection with this woman, had never heard of her, had never heard of her business, had never heard of any of these things, no connection in any way, shape or form whatsoever. Decided to go to this event, not be lazy, meet her and this eight figure opportunity, which I had been manifesting, literally just dropped in my lap. Uh, hi, my name is Taylor Proctor, uh, and I'm a business coach, and I'm so excited to be able to share with you today my story of manifesting an eight-figure business opportunity in the craziest amount of time I ever thought possible, so manifesting an eight-figure business opportunity in two weeks. Wow, that's amazing. Could you elaborate on how exactly you manifested? I mean, this is something big. I mean, we fail to manifest even the smallest of our desires, and this is something really crazy big. So please share it. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, it's it was really crazy. So one of the, and I'm going to use the word crazy a lot throughout this because it was like, whoa, how did this even happen? So I was walking, and I every day I I would walk on my back porch. So I was walking on my back porch, and out of nowhere, I had this thought come into my head that. I could be an eight figure entrepreneur and I'm already an entrepreneur at this time, but eight figures. And I was like, well, you never hear, you always hear, Oh, six figure, you know, maybe seven. So I was like, wait a minute, what is eight figures? So I'm like counting out on my hands, <laughs> right? Like what is eight figures? And it ends up being a minimum of $10 million. So then immediately my brain goes, well, how are we going to do that? right? Like everybody, how, how are we going to do that? That's the first question we ask as humans. And I'm like, okay, if I sold this many of this product over the next five years, like, you know, all of these things are like, how could I scale this to be a $10 million entrepreneur, an eight figure entrepreneur? And then I had the thought, let go of those expectations of how, and just embrace the idea that you can be an eight figure entrepreneur. So that was the very first thing that I did as a step, if you will, is I really foregoed the expectations of how. So I was like, all right, really have nothing to lose. I'm not an eight figure entrepreneur at this point in time. So I'm like, I've got nothing to lose by being like, cool, I'm going to be an eight figure entrepreneur. So then I decided that uh, for me, I learn really well auditorily and speaking it out. So I was like, okay, every day on my morning walk for 45 minutes straight, I'm going to tell myself I am Taylor Proctor. I am an intuitive business strategist and eight-figure entrepreneur. And I said that over and over and over and over, <laughs> all over again, right? For 45 minutes as I am pacing on my back porch, as I'm walking my back porch every day. And I started to kind of believe it, right? Like, oh, okay, we're still foregoing the expectations. I've created a custom declaration for me and what I want and what I'm trying to manifest. So then I did a couple of other crazy things. And again, this isn't like a two week time frame. I had no expectation because I'd foregone that I'd foregone them. No expectation even of time. So I'm like, well, we'll just keep on saying this and roll with it and see how it goes. So then I did a couple of other crazy things and uh, tested some stuff out. And I actually went and visited a friend who lived two hours away. And the whole drive up for two hours, I'm saying this declaration and I'm like trying to have these uh, conversations with what I would consider my higher self and like, okay, what does this, and I'm sitting there saying how, 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 and it's like, no, forego those expectations, just keep saying it and keep waiting. And so when things would come up, I'd be like, all right, we need to do a belief breakthrough on like why I can't do this or this and this. And eventually two weeks later, I was invited to go to a conference. Now, I've got to be really fair here. It was a Saturday. The conference was two hours away. And so it's like, you know how you go to conferences. So I'm like, I got to get ready and I got to look good. I've got to drive up there. It starts at 9 a.m. This is a Saturday. I am tired. I don't want to go. <laughs> right? I'm like, oh, I just want to be lazy at home. I don't want to go. And I got the thought, no, you need to go. Additionally, within that, uh, the person who was hosting the event, lovely woman, she'd invited me to probably 16 different events over like four years, and I would always miss them. And not because I didn't go, but because 
I would get the invitation she sent to me on like on LinkedIn and I would never be on LinkedIn. And so I would check in on my LinkedIn like once a quarter and there'd be all these like, oh, come to this event and it's long gone. So I felt so bad because I was like, she always invites me to these events. I'm finally able to go to one and she's been asking me for four years to attend some of these. And now I finally can. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't want to go. So the next step, the next thing that did was not be lazy, <laughs> like plain and simple. I was like, you know what? I just need to go. Whether it's peer pressure obligation or like, don't be lazy, just get up, get ready and go to this event. So I drive up to this event and we end up doing like a breakout session and I meet this woman. And the first thing she says to me is, how come I don't know you? And I'm like, you know, and there's part of me that's kind of being silly. And I'm like, hmm, how come you don't know me? <laughs> All right. And then I was like, no, honestly, uh, I don't know. We haven't been in each other's circles. It's really nice to meet you, blah, blah, blah. And she goes, I need to connect with you. Okay. So we, we share phone numbers and that's that. The event ends. I go home, whatever. So Monday morning, this happened on a Saturday, Monday, Monday morning, she texts me and says, hey, uh, I would love for you to come over to my, to my home and we just talk. Turns out she lives seven minutes away from me. We have never met. We have no commonality in friends. We met at an event two hours away from both of us and no, no, no clue of each other. Seven minutes away, just down the street. So I'm like, okay. And I'm thinking she, she has a product, a service that is uh, weekly TV shows broadcast live uh, internationally across the globe. And I have my own podcast and things like that. So I'm thinking that she, I'm, I'm a good candidate for her, her service and her program. So I'm thinking she's going to try to sell me into her program when I go to her home. And I'm like, that's totally fine. So we show up and she starts asking me about my history and what I do and all of these things. And so I share with her and I'm just sharing, right? No expectation of where is this going? I have this thought, oh, she's just asking me. And then she's going to be like, oh, that'd be perfect for a show on my network. And she goes, okay, I need you as a member of my executive team. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm like, uh, all right, we, we can do that, but let me think on it and all that stuff. And this is the, I would say like the fourth thing I did, there's a whole bunch of things in between, but the fourth thing that I did that really solidified this manifestation was that I, and throughout this, I have said like, oh, I had the thought, I had the thought and I followed it, right? That's really following my intuition. And so in this case, I have what you would consider an intuitive gift or an intuitive strength when it comes to business strategy that is a sense of adventure. So she's saying, hey, I'd love for you to be a member of my executive team. And I get the intuitive hit that this feels like an adventure. And what that sense of adventure actually feels like is imagine hiking up a mountain. If you're like, I've got my 30 pound backpack with my water and my hiking boots and my thick socks, and I'm like hiking up the mountain, the sense of adventure splits two ways. The sense of adventure is that I've got my backpack and I'm so excited and like, we're going to hike up here and isn't this a beautiful view? I can't wait to get to the top. Yeah, my feet hurt a little bit, but it's totally fine because this is worth it. This is amazing. I'm so excited. What an adventure. And then the other side of the sense of adventure, which is a lack of, is I've got my backpack and I've got to trudge up the mountain and we're up at 6 a.m. Why are we here? It's cold, I'm tired, I don't wanna do this. And so like for me, when a business opportunity comes, I know that if it feels like a sense of adventure, I'm all in, like that's my intuitive strength to know this is the right thing for me. And if it doesn't feel like a sense of adventure, I don't. So really honing in on my intuitive strengths helps support making this decision. So she says, hey, I want you to be a member of my executive team. We talked through it a little bit and I'm like, yeah, I think this sounds great. Uh, I'm my own business owner. That's not a problem for her. We're actually going to be, I'm contracted to work with her through my company. So now it's income and revenue coming into my company. So I'm like, all of this is excellent. Coming in as a fractional COO. 
So we signed the contracts, all of those things. Well, part of the contract negotiation is that I negotiated for not only a um, contractor salary, but also percentage of ownership and equity in the company. So the percentage, the percentage in ownership in the company is 1%. This is very important to this story. <laughs> 1%. So cool. We start working together. And again, I've, I've been saying every day I'm an into, I'm a, a eight figure business strategist, eight figure business owner. Right. So start working together. And she goes, by the way, uh, we have a goal to build this organization up and sell it for a large amount of money within five years. We're already working with a mergers and acquisitions broker who believes that we can sell it for a billion dollars, which is unicorn numbers. And so she's like, but we're already working with an expert who's done this before. She's guiding us along for the next three to five years to really build us out to be able to sell for this amount. Part of my job coming in a COO is to work closely with that broker and get the company to where it needs to go. So, okay, great. I keep working, da, 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 da. I come home and I get the thought, check that contract. So I check the contract and I'm like, oh, I, I have 1% ownership in this company that is going to be selling for a billion dollars. What's 1% of a billion? $10 million, which is our eight figures. So it turned into this situation where it was like, follow the intuition, right? Forgo the expectations, give yourself a custom declaration and say it as much as you can, right? Any chance that you get, get that into your particular activating center, get that going and make sure that it's an aligned activity for you through knowing your intuitive strengths and then don't be lazy and take the action. And so out of nowhere, literally dropped in my lap in two weeks. I had no connection with this woman, had never heard of her, had never heard of her business, had never heard of any of these things, no connection in any way, shape or form whatsoever. Decided to go to this event, not be lazy, meet her and this eight figure opportunity, which I had been manifesting, literally just dropped in my lap. And so that is my story of manifesting an eight figure business opportunity because it has been crazy. Now, I think the difference here is, is how we manifest things can show up differently. Like if I had not foregone the expectations, I would have been trying to force this manifestation to happen in a different way. Additionally, if I had, if I had a perception of this is how it needs to be, I would have been assuming that, okay, eight figures needs to be in my hands now. And the truth of it is, is that I've manifested an opportunity that I've now put in the work and I'm not lazy, right? I put in the work to be able to do. I now have a full 1% ownership in the company and I've actually stepped away from being the COO and I'm on the board of directors, but I still have that ownership and it's still on its track to be sold for that amount of money. So through the manifestation techniques, this opportunity came I put in the work, I've earned my percentage, and now I'm just waiting for the rest of it to come. But that manifestation really was like, oh, wow. I couldn't even, I had to count on my hands what eight figures was. And here it is dropped in my lap completely like, oh yeah, you'll have 1% ownership of this company, which I love. And it's an incredible company. And like I said, now I'm on the board of directors and my time is freed up to focus on other things as well. But the manifestation is there and it happened. Just mind blowing, absolutely mind blowing. <laughs> and I'm so really glad is. that, yeah, and I'm so glad that you shared everything. I mean, the analysis part of it, like how exactly this happened from the feeling of excitement and not being lazy and just declaring this on and on. So amazing. And the process you followed. Also, you mentioned the the two limited edition cars that you manifested. Could you also share that story? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, one of the things with the eight figure piece is also an identity shift. And so part of those declarations are really adopting into your identity. Like, am I the kind of person that can make this happen? Am I the, am I an eight figure intuitive entrepreneur, you know, and business strategist? Like, can I be that person? So previously to the eight-figure business opportunity, a couple years previous to that, I 
I had put on my, I just put on a sheet of paper, like a list of things that I wanted. And one of those was I wanted a Porsche. And this is totally a, an example of like something that you're trying to manifest and getting way better, <laughs> which is also another like forego your expectations piece. Because again, if you're trying to control it, you're kind of limiting yourself on what you actually can receive. So I had had on this list of paper that I just ended up putting up on my wall, this Porsche. And I said, I wanted a, a chalk color Porsche, which is like a off white and orange, orange trim. And it had to have at least a sunroof. Like that's what I wanted. So I just put it on my wall and I didn't pay very much attention to it. Well, a couple of months, like I didn't pay much attention to it. And that's the thing is I wasn't focusing on it. It was just up, up, on, up on my wall. And a couple of months later, my husband messaged me and said, well, he was with me and he said, hey, take a look at this. And shows me that someone locally is selling their Porsche. And oh, and I also should note that on my sheet of paper, I said I also wanted to buy it in cash, which also felt like, uh, you know, who, we're going to afford a portion cash like sure <laughs> we'll just put that up on there we want it but sure you know kind of sarcastically so he's like hey here's this this portion it's uh it's orange so not chalk but orange is my signature color and so he's like it's orange and I'm like oh I love it and it's a convertible I'm like that's way better than a sunroof so I'm like okay okay yeah yeah that would be awesome and then I'm like oh and we had the cash to be able to pay for it. So I'm like, here it is. Just like, again, dropped in my lap. I was not doing anything to like really bring this about. And my husband found it. And so then I had this whole identity crisis where I'm like, am I the kind of person that can drive a Porsche? <laughs> All right? Like, okay. Like, and we've owned Mercedes and things like that. But to me, the Porsche or Porsche is really like, elite in my mind and so I'm like man uh, you know and, and it's gonna be my car and can I drive up to networking events or dinners with friends and be like this is my car like you know and then I'm like do I want to be that kind of person and and I'm just like trying to kind of convince myself one way or the other is this something I can adopt into who I am as a person now obviously material things do not make you who you are as a person but for me, like if I'm going to spend the money, if it's going to be a large part of my life, it's sitting in my garage, you know, in my house, it's it's my car, it's bright orange. So it's not like you wouldn't see it if I was driving it. And so then I'm like, and I'm being seen, like all of these pieces coming into play. And I'm like, okay, hey, do I really want this? <clears throat> and do I want to spend money that we had saved up for just rainy days and take a chunk of it and be like, boom, got a car. So I'm trying to like work through all this. And I finally decide, yep, let's get it. <clears throat> and then we hear nothing from the owner. So I'm thinking we lost it. We're not going to get this car. And I'm like, dang, I moved too slow. You know, all those things that you start to tell yourself if your manifestations don't come. I moved too slow. I didn't take advantage of it. I, I maybe I, I shouldn't have tried to fit into my identity, gotten it, and then tried to fit it in. You know, I'm just telling myself all of these things. And, and it sucks too, because now I'm like, I'm a Porsche driver. <laughs> like, that's my identity. And now I don't have a Porsche. So I'm like, that, that's a real bummer. And then my husband, a couple of days later goes, by the way, I found this, which is a similar, like the same version of the car has 30,000 less miles and has all of the options. Additionally, all but one, it doesn't have, it didn't have tinted mirrors, but it had every other option you could possibly get top of the line, best version of this car that you could get. And he's like, there's this one here. Additionally, the other one that we missed out on was a uh, manual transmission. This one's an automatic. Porsches, most people don't, most Porsche drivers would prefer a stick shift, a manual um, transmission. I actually prefer the automatic. So I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so much better. It's got less mileages. It has all, all, of, the, all of the packages that make it like the highest you can get. 
It's the same color. It, it's uh, <clears throat> It's got all of these pieces that I really like. And then if you can see behind me, I have an infinity sign that is my logo. Well, both of these cars are limited edition. So they're 2008 and I've got it in 2020. And so by then it was already several years old over, over you know, over a decade. And so it's what makes it a limited edition is that it's a custom color created only 250 in the entire world. You put over 12 years on it, right? You can imagine there's probably only 150 to, to maybe 100 left. And that one had gone. Here's this new one that's like top of the line, everything that I want. And it's an automatic. So I'm like, yeah, that's my car. We're going to go get that car. And the one, the stick shift one was local. And I was like, everyone's going to be like, oh, you got Mary's car. I'm like, no, it's my car. <laughs> I've adopted it into my identity, you know. So I'm like, I really want the one from California because it will be my car, not that person's car. And it's everything that I want. And my husband goes, okay, great. So then he goes, I really need to know, like, do you feel like the the California car, the automatic, is really what you want? And I said, yeah, absolutely. And he goes, well, I have something I need to tell you. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and he goes, the lady who sold the, who was selling the uh, stick shift version here in Utah, she actually didn't ghost us. I bought it and I've been fixing a few little things and I was going to give it to you on Sunday. He goes, however, I agree with you. I think that the California car is your car. So let's go get it. So we did a random flight to California, went and picked up my car, drove it home, had a most in the most incredible experience. And my husband's a driver guy. And I've never gotten that. Like, I'm like, you would go on rallies and drive for eight hours just to get to another location. And that's fun for you. And I'm like, God, kill me now. I drove my car for 12 hours, my new car for 12 hours. I'm like, I could drive this all day. Like I loved it. It totally changes the game. So we get home and then his friend who he was keeping the other Porsche at their house comes and brings the other Porsche. So for uh, about a month, we actually had two limited edition out of 250, right? And the automatic one, going back to the infinity sign, is number 80 out of 250. So I'm like, this is my car. Like, it's totally an eight infinity sign. Like, like it's number 80 out of 250. It's the sub 100. It's the automatic. It's got all the packages. It's all the things, the less mileage. This is my car. And it's the automatic. So we ended up selling the stick shift version to my neighbor across the street. So here's this extremely rare Porsche and we have two in the same neighborhood right across the street from each other. But it was the most incredible thing because I didn't know that I was manifesting it, right? And I, let alone two. And I didn't know that we were saving the money to be able to buy these cars in cash. And I didn't know that I was building all the pieces to be able to manifest. And the big one there is the identity. Sometimes when we have this idea that we want to have so much money or we want to have this material thing or we want to go on these vacations, sometimes for us it's like, well, am I the kind of person that does travel the world? You know, if we want to manifest this vacation, it's like, am I the kind of person that does go to Dubai? Am I the kind of person, I actually want to go to Switzerland, which is also a very expensive vacation, right? And it's like, am I the kind of person who spends that kind of money traveling? Am I the kind of person who can show up in a bright orange convertible and be like, hey guys, and be totally owning it and not self-conscious? Am I that, am I that kind of person? Am I the kind of person who can make certain amount of money per year? And that goes back to like our eight figure opportunity. I really had to adopt the identity of I am that kind of person and work through the beliefs and work through all of those pieces to come out on the other side. And I think when you can do that with your manifestations, an abundance of things happen because I wanted I wanted a, a white car with orange trim because I was like, I just can't get an orange one because I didn't have it in my identity yet a fully orange one. And I love sunroofs. I didn't even think about, well, let's take that sunroof times 10 and make it a convertible. 
And then let alone, like now here's this orange car, I've adopted it into my identity, it's convertible, it's all these things. And then it's like, nope, not only that, you get to choose between two and the other one is more drivable for you because it's an automatic. It, it's number 80. It totally aligns with your brand. It is the same orange. It has less mileage. It has all the packages, like has all these things that took what I had originally thought I wanted, turned it into what I did want, and then gave me an abundance and made me made it perfect for me. So it was like this or something better. And like, that's the two things that I think were big in instigators in manifesting the cars was the fact that I adopted it into my identity and I didn't limit like, okay, and this is exactly what it looks like. I said pretty much this or something better and I got two times the better. <laughs> Another incredible story. Thanks a lot for sharing this second story with my viewers. And uh, you also mentioned uh, while narrating the story about your cars that the first time when you thought that you almost just did not manifest the first car. So what what exactly happens, you know, when uh, uh, we fail to manifest? Do you have something, I mean, some story to share when you don't manifest something that you really want to manifest? Absolutely. So... Yeah, I mean, when I thought I didn't get the first car, it was really hard because I was like, I, I'm a Porsche driver now. Like, this is my identity. And, but luckily, previous to that, I had actually experienced a loss I would consider in manifesting, uh, which was when I, I'm a business coach now and I am fully out on my own um, with my own business, but I did work 15 years in corporate. So previous to the car situation, I was still in corporate and I was leading a team and all of these things. And I had had on my list, on that same list that actually had the car, I had said I wanted to win an award for my work. So uh, at, at the company I was working at, they would offer this annual reward, an impact uh, award. And you have to be nominated and all of these things. And And I was like, well, I'm not not playing the politics game. I'm just over here running my department. Like it is what it is. It'd be really cool to win that award, but you know, whatever. I kind of forego the expectations again. So I ended up being nominated and then I ended up winning this award. I'm like, man, that's amazing, right? So you'd be like, well, how's this a non getting your manifestation story? Cause I got what I was manifesting, but I didn't know is that everyone who won that award and there was like one person per each larger company like silo. And so, um, and then within those, a couple of like sub departments. So I think there was five people that won that award within the larger company silo that my department was in. So there was five of us that won this award out of a company of thousands. So it was still really cool to win the award. Well, unbeknownst to me, Everyone who wins this award gets put into this competition with each other to win a trip of a lifetime. So it's like, you won this award, this is amazing, we celebrate, and we we also, everybody who won the award won to like go to a retreat in Mexico. But you could, you had to do a presentation and all these things, and then you would say, actually, my dream vacation is this, and I would like to go. So I had mentioned already, my dream vacation is to go to Switzerland, specifically to see the, the Matterhorn. And so I did, I was like, cool. So I did my presentation out of the people that I was competing against. I was like, there's no way I'm not going to win this. And not in like a conceited way, but I was like, they came into established departments. They did all these things. I started my department from scratch. Also, I had just gotten back from living in Edinburgh, Scotland, for six weeks setting up our international team. So like I had, I was traveling internationally. I had an international team. We were setting, I had started the department from complete scratch. I'm like, there's no way that you could see everything I've built and not be like, yeah, she wins. So I'm like, I'm manifesting it. I'm like, yep, I'm gonna go to Switzerland. This is gonna be awesome. I've got this award and I manifested that. This is the next level. This is, I essentially thought this is mine to lose. And I'm like, I'm gonna win. It's gonna be no problem. Did my presentation, it was amazing. I tied it all in, like super great. And then they announced the winners. And they're like, this was so hard. We couldn't uh, decide in, in like my categories. We couldn't decide, so we actually picked two people. And I'm like, okay, okay, yeah, no problem, that's great. I didn't win either of them. 
And I was like, devastated. <laughs> and I was like, this is like, are you kidding me? Like, how? And it wasn't against like, the I had nothing against the other people or anything like that. But I was like, I crushed it. Like, I brought my A game. And I am the type of individual that I wouldn't consider myself at this point in time a good person who's ma manifesting things. But if I look back, I'm like, when I was in high school, I decided one day randomly I was going to get a solo in the school musical. Was not in choir, not in drama. And I went and I tried out. I mean, I practiced and did stuff and I went and I got it. So like, I'm the kind of person I'm like, I will go 100%. I'm going to get this and I'm going to get it. So this was like devastating to me. And I was like, man, this sucks. And it was also like, blatant it was in front of my entire department was like oh good luck you've got this right you know all these things and then I had to be like yeah I didn't win and kind of as like a salt in the wound I don't know how close I was to winning uh obviously not that close because I gave it to two other people but I had so many people who were on the, like the judging committee send me messages and say like how incredible my presentation was and how how much of an impact I had made and I was like but I didn't win so it obviously the manifestation didn't work yet this was at, so I spent the end of 2019 living in Scotland, won this award in January of 2020, and we know where this is going, <laughs> right? And so won the first award in January of 2020. They did the competition in February of 2020, and I didn't win. And then, of course, COVID hit for the United States, March of 2020. So everything went to work from home and all of these things. And none of us who won the awards, the base one, or those who won the, the additionals got to go on our trips. None of us got to go. And they were like, okay, hey, well, you can wait and then we'll do trips as soon as we can, or we'll just offer you like a payout. And I don't know what the payout was for the people who actually won, but for those of us who'd won the first level of the awards, we... I had mentioned a retreat in Mexico. So they just paid us, if we wanted, whatever that cost was. So I, I got a cool check, it was great. And then towards the end of the year, an opportunity came up to move on. And I think back and I go, okay, if I had one, I wouldn't have been able to actually go for years, not just a few months, like years. I wouldn't have been able to actually go and then this opportunity came and I wouldn't have taken it because I would have been like, but I don't want to lose out on my trip. And so instead I was able to go take this other opportunity, which then catapulted me into, I'm actually ready to step away from 15 years in corporate marketing operations, leadership strategy type of roles, ownership type of roles and move into owning my own business, being an entrepreneur doing coaching and consulting and fractional executive work, which I was able to do all because I had taken this other job, which I was able to take because I wasn't honed, I wasn't chained down by the promise of a trip in the future that I didn't get because COVID hit because I didn't win it. And so it's so fascinating how, obviously hindsight, so fascinating how you can look back and go, it was actually a really big blessing to not get what I was trying to manifest. And it's fascinating in that regard that the perspective really shifts over time, but in it, you're like, how did I not get that? Like I believed it a hundred percent. And in this instance, I was like, I also had the proof. Like, I mean, I had bulleted list of here's all the accomplishments that my department has had, bringing in a million dollars in revenue in a three year period and like growing the team from one from no team members to 30 and from one language to servicing five and to one team local to international and uh, just and servicing clients that were our global behemoth brands. And it's like, how did I not win that? And it's looking back, I'm like, I didn't win it because I, it would have chained me down. I didn't know COVID was coming. I didn't know this other opportunity would come a year later and we'd still all be working from home and locked down and travel restrictions and all those things. And so anytime now, if I don't receive something that I've been trying to manifest, 
A, I'm like, not everything happens in two weeks like the eight figure opportunity. So give it time. B, maybe I'm trying to control it instead of doing this or something, getting this or something better, like the, the Porsches, Porsches. And then C, I'm like, if I, if I am doing all of these things and then I'm still not getting it, I have to trust that it's, it's not happening for a reason so that I can manifest something bigger and better. And now as, as my own business owner, right, as my, as an entrepreneur, as I'm creating this much bigger ripple effect of positivity and impact in the world by working with other business owners and their ripple effects, right? It's so much more rewarding than what I was doing and when I do go to Switzerland, it's like, yeah, this, this, this feels so much better than I beat out other people. It's like, I'm here on my own accord. I'm doing it because this is the way I want to do it. I'm not limited in timeline. Like, oh, I only have three days. Cause that's what they're covering. Like none of that is there. Instead, it's, it's going to be my trip, my way. And I think when we don't receive our manifestations, even an understanding of like, there's a reason that this is not coming your way. And so either hold the line and keep waiting because timing can happen. Expect that what you're expecting might actually need to be foregone so you can get something better. And if you don't receive it, really trust and understand that there's a reason and it's setting you up for your greatest good. Wow. That's absolutely powerful. Absolutely powerful message. So a lot of times we don't manifest and even in my personal life i have experienced something similar i really wanted to get this one particular job as a bureaucrat and uh, i did not get that job but i got mm -hmm. something far far better that led me to uh, you know the president's estate so i was also working for the president and uh, i currently work uh, you know as a translator for the indian prime minister so it's like if i had <laughs> you know being a bureaucrat maybe i would have gotten something else but not this this is something much more satisfying you know <laughs> yeah and, and it's almost like it's so much more satisfying but you couldn't have imagined how much more satisfying it would be until you're in it and you're like oh yeah this is this is why yeah it's it's like you just connect the dots backwards you cannot mm -hmm. see what is coming, but when you look back, you know why certain things did not happen because it the universe wanted you to get something far better. 100%. I love it. Is there anything else you would like to share? Uh, well, I do have a free resource for your listeners, um, which is all about manifestation. And it's actually an eight part email series where I share my story of manifesting the eight figure opportunity at a deeper level. And so you'll actually receive uh, an email a day that contains a video of me sharing the eight crazy things. I shared four here today. Uh, so there are four more, but the eight crazy things that I did to manifest that opportunity in two weeks so that you can utilize those actionable tips and those crazy things, should you choose you want to, uh, to manifest whatever it is in your life. So I'd be happy to um, leave, leave your listeners with the opportunity to sign up for that completely free email series so you can learn more about the crazy things that I did to manifest that opportunity beyond the four that we discussed today. And so um, I can share that link with you and we can put it in the notes, I'm sure. Uh, thanks a lot for sharing this wonderful resource with my listeners, my viewers, and I'll put the link in the description. So do check the description. And thanks a lot for being here, Taylor. It's just amazing listening to your crazy stories. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. It's always an honor and a delight to be able to talk about the mindsets and all of those pieces that are connected to manifestation. So thank you for having an incredible platform to be able to talk about these things.